everything you've ever imagined is real is actually God's way of showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you when I was 10 years old a teacher she said I want everybody to write what you want to be when you grow up I wrote on my paper I want to be on TV so she got to me and she said little Stevie come to the front of the class I figured this is a big moment for me so I get up there and turns out she called me to the front to humiliate me she said who do you know on TV who in this school ever been on TV why would you write such a thing on your paper she finally looked at me and said and look at you standing there you can't even talk so every Christmas I send her a flat screen TV whatever you've been imagining is too small compared to what God has opened up before you it is massive it is huge it is simply an opportunity you can't measure it with a stick you can't put it in a computer that if you walk into what God is giving you you will never ever be the same again I mean a radical revolution is about to take forth this is about a space and time that God has created for you to step into a new dimension a higher expression of yourself the outworking of the internal stuff that's been shut up in your bowels tied up in your belly you have finally come to the place of maturity that you can step into what you have been dreaming about and God is about to revolutionize your life this thing is big this thing is huge Touch three people and say, look for opportunities, look for opportunities. Don't watch the clock, don't look at the calendar, don't worry about the seasons, don't worry about what people say, don't worry about anything. God is setting before you a large opportunity. And if you perceive it, you can walk into it and manage it and the wells of blessings and deliverance are going to flow and it's going to start in you. It's coming out of your spirit. It's coming out of your creativity. And that's why the enemy wants you distracted because this large place starts from a small place. Go to the places that they have been jammed up and closed down and God said, dig them out again. Dig out things you put on the back burner. Dig out things that you thought about, didn't have the resources to do. Dig it out because out of those small places will come big things. Don't despise small beginnings. What is significant to you is that God, in spite of all the things you have been through, and in spite of all the things you have failed to do, and in spite of all the people who tried to cancel you out, God sustained you, brought you safely through, and he is about to put you in a large place. This thing is big. This thing is big. I groan for it. I cried for it, I labored for it, but this thing down inside of me is big. I want to say this is your year, but what I need to say, this is your opportunity. If you waste the year, you will lose the opportunity. Unclutter your well. The person you're touching will die a bitter man or a bitter woman if they don't seize the opportunity of living their life to the fullest. It's easy to water down what God's promised us. Well, I don't like this job, but at least I'm employed. It's good enough. I was believing for a nice house, but I guess this apartment will do. I guess I'm at least okay. No, okay is not who you were created to be. If you're going to become all you were created to be, you have to keep a fire in your spirit, a resolve that says, I refuse to settle for less than what God's promised me. 
it may be taking longer than you thought. It may be more difficult. The good news is it's not too late. What God promised you is still on the way. What you were excited about before the delays is still in route. Now, maybe the reason you're not seeing this favor is you've settled. You've accepted that your dream's not going to happen. As long as you think that way, it will limit your life. Pack up your belongings. Mediocrity is not your home. You may be there now, but that is not your permanent location. Yes, we should be content, but you shouldn't be satisfied with less than what you know God put in your heart. There will be times God speaks things to your spirit that don't make sense to your mind. You'll never write your book, never build that children's home you're dreaming about. You don't have the resources. You may not, but God does. Why don't you take the limits off of Him? You wouldn't be hearing this if He wasn't about to do something unusual, something that you didn't see coming. Make room in your thinking for the abundant, more than enough life that belongs to you. Now, you don't have to take up for God. Let me help God make this happen. God doesn't need that kind of help. He flung stars into space. He's not at a loss at how to turn your situation around. Don't reduce it to what makes sense to you. Don't let what you don't have talk you out of what God does have. By this time next year, you're going to see something God promised that you've already written off. You've settled, but you don't know what God is up to. He said, have I spoken it and shall I not bring it to pass? God has some of these who would have ever thought blessings coming your way. Favor that doesn't make sense. What am I saying? Don't settle for a watered down version of what God promised you. There are dreams he's whispered to you in the night. Things that seem so big. Me have overflow in my finances, have more than enough. Or me be healthy, in shape, energetic. That may seem so unlikely. God wouldn't have promised it if he wasn't going to bring it to pass. Are you watering down what God promised? Talking yourself into it? Thoughts will tell you all the reasons why it's not going to happen for you. You're too old. You're too young. You don't have the talent, the education, the resources. None of that stops our God. But sometimes the reason we settle is life hasn't turned out the way we thought. Unfair things have happened. Now we've lost our passion. This is what happened to Abraham's father. He had three sons. One of those sons, a young man named Haran, died at an early age. Years later, God told him to leave the place he was living and move to Canaan, the promised land. And he started out that way. But when they came to the city of Haran, the same name as the son he lost, he got so discouraged that he gave up on his dream. He's the original one God told to go to the promised land, not Abraham. But because of the loss, he chose to settle. If you're going to reach your destiny, you have to dig down deep and say, yes, I've been hurt, but I'm not settling here. I've been betrayed, but I'm not settling in bitterness. I lost a loved one, but I'm not settling in despair. I know God has beauty for these ashes. I know weeping endures for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. We can all find a reason to live offended, angry, but if you'll refuse to settle, on the other side of that hurt is a new level of your destiny. Press past the disappointments. Press past those lonely nights. Amazing things await you if you just don't settle. Life has thrown you a curve. You have to get your fire back. God did not bring you this far to leave you. See, once you commit yourself, the how will come. You will figure it out. You want to begin to just challenge yourself because you really don't know what you can't do. Once you think about the goals that you want to achieve, and I really want to challenge you to make up your mind that you're going to make that happen for yourself.